Hi everyone, welcome to Advocate Hub class. Um, as you may or may not know, my name is Heather. I work on the support team here in Fluidive. Um, usually I have a special slide introducing myself, but today we're kind of doing things a little bit differently. Um, so we are here to talk about integrating your Advocate Hub with Salesforce, but I want to just give you a bit of background on why we're talking about this at this point in time. Um, at Influitive, the customer success team, we um, all get together every three weeks and we come up with a topic that we want to tackle as a group, something that we want to integrate into our workflow. And it's usually something around, let's say, badges and levels or growing your advocates, um, some things you've seen class topics on in the past. And the idea is for us to all work, put some sort of focus into creating new documentation and new best practices and really consolidating our knowledge on that topic so that we can communicate everything to the best of our ability out to all of you. Um, so this time, this particular three-week sprint, as we refer to them, uh, our topic is Salesforce. And so most of our sprints really focus on developing new knowledge to communicate out. Um, but this sprint is very focused on sort of honing in and refining our internal knowledge of Salesforce uh, so that we can all be Salesforce experts. If any of you have ever had a Salesforce issue with us, you've almost certainly spoken with Steve, our resident Salesforce expert, and we all want to be as good at understanding Salesforce as Steve is. Um, and part of that is creating better documentation that will allow you guys to communicate the benefits of a Salesforce integration or the sort of the, the main tenets of a Salesforce integration with Advocate Hub to your internal team as well. So Eli, who is one of our new advocacy coaches, has actually built a presentation, and we are going to be using that presentation today um, to talk about what the benefits are of having an integration with, between the Advocate Hub and Salesforce. Um, so as always, if you have questions throughout the meeting, just post them in the little chat window, and I will either address them at that moment if it's if I can, or we'll address them towards the end of the class. So that's kind of what we're going to be tackling today. So let's get started. Okay. So Influitive and Salesforce. Um, as I said, we're going to be talking about the Influitive and Salesforce integration. And there's really three key areas where this integration um, happens between the two platforms. So I guess just to back up a bit, for anyone who isn't familiar with Salesforce, it's um, what's referred to as a customer relationship management platform or tool. Um, it basically is just like a really fancy database that lets you consolidate all the information about your customers, your prospects, um, sort of any leads coming through the sales pipeline. It basically lets you store information and understand it and it allows you in to integrate a lot of that information with other platforms. Um, and so one of those platforms is Influitive's platform, the Advocate Hub. So often you'll hear people mention the Influitive Salesforce integration. Um, and so what's that all about? Um, there are three key areas where that sort of impacts both platforms. So there is a relationship between that the integration facilitates between advocates and your Salesforce contacts between referrals that come from the Advocate Hub and the leads, opportunities, closed or lost uh, deals um, in Salesforce, and then between uh, reference requests that are submitted through Salesforce that then, then turn into reference challenges for your advocates to complete in order to participate in a reference call with a prospect. So first we're going to be start out, starting out by talking about advocate profiles and contact records. So there are two sort of ways that this works. So step one is the Advocate Hub pulls data from the contact record in Salesforce, and it puts that information on the Advocate's profile in Influitive, in the Advocate Hub. Um, so you can specify which fields. So there's basic fields that it's always going to update. It's going to update title. It's going to update your Advocate's name. And it's going to update, there's a field called like Salesforce ID. So if there's a Salesforce, um, if there's a sales, if that, if you have an advocate that exists in Salesforce, sales, then our integration will do like a nightly sync, um, and it, basically the Advocate Hub runs over to Salesforce and says, "Hey, does the person with this email live in Salesforce?" And if the answer is yes, then they will capture that person's information, run it back to the Advocate Hub, and then say like, "Okay, John Smith is the vice president of Acme Corporation," and you know, there's a couple other fields that it fills in for you. And we can, and we're going to go into the app in a few minutes, and so I'll show you a little more detail on that. Um, and then on the other side, when Influitive is running over to your Salesforce to say like, hey, I'm looking for this person, if they find that person, they're also going to pass over what's called advocacy activity. And there will be, if you, depending on whether or not you set this element of the integration up on your Salesforce side, there is a section that you can add to the contact record that basically is called advocacy activities. And that section 
just pulls a list of all of the different activities that your advocate has done in the Advocate Hub. So whether it's you know, filled out a survey, completed a reference call, um, tweeted, submitted a referral, it's just basically a list of what all of these things are. The other thing that you can do is, is based on the information that you get from Salesforce that, and put it onto your Advocate record, or on your Advocate Hub contact profile, um, you can segment your advocates based on this information. So let's say if you want to map over at a, um, their NPS score or something like what their industry is or what their company size is, you can make all these custom mappings occur and then you can get all, all that information in the Advocate Hub and you can segment your advocates based on that information. So I'm going to show you how to do that in a few minutes. The other thing that can be done is you can actually Find someone in Salesforce and you can nominate them to be an advocate. And at that point, they'll land on your nominees list and you, the administrator, can see who nominated them and you can choose to invite them if you would like to do that. So, advocate profiles. And so this is a screenshot showing what it looks like on the advocate's profile. So um, when your advocate signs up, they put in their name and their email. But then, as I said before, Influitive runs over to, the, to Salesforce and looks up this email address, and if they find anyone, then they bring back this information here that's in the box. So the Salesforce ID, their title, and their company. So it brings all that information back by default when you set up the integration. Now, if let's say Don Draper signed up with his personal email, you know, like maybe here he signed up with Don plus Draper at Inflotive, but let's say in a hypothetical situation, he, and that's the, so in this case, Don Draper plus at Inflotive.com that is his email address in Salesforce. So when we went over to Salesforce, we found that information. We brought back this other information in the orange box. However, if Don had signed up with a different email address, let's say he signed up to the Advocate Hub with Sally at Influitive.com, then if you want to still make sure that this Advocate account is attached to his Salesforce record, all you have to do is go to his Salesforce contact record, get his Salesforce ID. It just shows up in like as part of the URL in the top of his contact record page. You paste it in here and you hit Save Profile and then it will automatically connect the two. So that's sort of a manual way to get around that type of issue. Now the other thing that's important here, so as I said by default, Salesforce ID, title, and company, those are updated. However, you can also choose to use all of these match criteria options and you can use these to ma you can map these different fields over to Salesforce, and then you can populate them with information based on what lives in your Salesforce database. It's also possible to completely make up different match criteria. So by default, we have a few different ones on here. But let's say you wanted to you had a field in Salesforce called city, or called favorite color, or you know company size, anything like that. If you have that field in Salesforce, you can actually create it in your match criteria in the Advocate Hub and then you can map that field over to the Salesforce field, the corresponding Salesforce field where that information lives, and that will pass, and then in the nightly sync, it will pass that information back here into your match criteria list. So what does that look like? That's like a lot of words we just threw out there. So this is how you do it. When you go into your ad administrator settings in the Advocate Hub, there's a section called System. Underneath System, you can choose Match Categories. That is where you determine what the match criteria are on your page or on your Advocate's profile. So you can simply by clicking Add Match Category, it brings up a little field where you can just straight up add them in if you'd like. Now, the next thing to do is go into your Salesforce settings. So under Admin Settings again, you click Salesforce, then you click Field Mappings, and on the left-hand side, you're going to see all the different match categories that you've previously selected and, or that you've previously set up. So there are a few default features or diff default fields, but these ones you, you can also add in like whatever you want. Then, uh, if you see one that is unmapped, you can click on unmapped and it's going to actually give you the opportunity to type in what that field's name is in Salesforce and that will allow you to pass the information back. So we're going to just pop into the application for a few minutes and take a look at what that looks like to do. Okay, so here we are. I'm under field mappings and here I am in my Advocate Hub and I see position, it's unmapped. I see nominee source unmapped, so I want to map that one. Now this is the type of thing that you would definitely want to get your Salesforce administrator involved in because it's a little bit on the more complicated side if you don't, if you're not very familiar with Salesforce. If you are pretty familiar with Salesforce, it might be something you can try tackling on your own. So you would choose, so what am I, what am I doing here? I'm saying that I want to find the information of the nominee source in Salesforce and I want to bring that information back 
onto the advocate's profile. So here we go. So that information would be on the advocate's contact record. So I choose, okay, which Salesforce object? There's only one option, it's contact, that's where it's easy peasy. And then what is the field's name in Salesforce? Now I know that this one is nominee underscore source because it's just like a field until, because I just happen to know that. Um, but this is something that you can either look up in Salesforce so you can double check with your Salesforce admin. So because nominee source is a custom field, and I know that because I know about this field, I would put in underscore underscore C for custom. And then I would be able to click create Salesforce mapping and all of a sudden, when we do the nightly sync, anyone who has a blank nominee source field, then we're going to run their information over to Salesforce and say, hey, is there anything in this box in Salesforce? And if there is, we're going to bring it back and put it on their advocate profile. Okay, let's go back to our slideshow here. So now that you've got that kind of set up, you have all these advocates that have this sort of very rich profile with a lot of different information about who they are and you know, where they work and the, what industry they're in. Maybe you want to target your challenges specifically based on this. And we did have a previous Advocate Hub class that talked about this type of groups and segmentation and how you can use match criteria to really create distinct experiences for your Advocate Hubs, for, sorry, for your advocates. And this is definitely an example of how you can do that. So let's say you want to target challenges to everyone whose title equals manager. As long as you have the title field, um, I mean you have the title field by default, so anyone who has those field has that field filled in with other manager or director will then see that challenge. We go to another example. So you can do that, sorry, on this this is directly on the challenge um, like the challenge itself. So when you're setting up your challenge under targeting, you can say, hey, I want anyone with this title to see this challenge. Conversely, you can also do this when you're setting up a group. And you can say that anyone who inclu is included in this group should be a person who has uh, the country of New Zealand. So they would have that special match category. It would be mapped over to Salesforce. Salesforce would say, you know, yes, Sally Jo lives in New Zealand. Um, Salesforce would tell the Advocate Hub that Sally Jo lives in New Zealand, and then she would be have this target challenge. Or this this challenge targeted to her. So now the other part of this is advocacy activities. And this is basically a screenshot of what the advocacy activities section looks like in Salesforce. So let's say the previous example, Sally Jo. Sally Jo, you go to her contact record in Salesforce and you're going to see a section called advocacy activities. And when you go to that section, you're going to see all of this stuff right here. You're going to see the activity name, when it was done, the type of challenge it was, um, and that's kind of the whole situation. So the list can actually get quite long and you have very active advocates, they do a lot of activities, but this is here because it gives your sales team an opportunity to see what exactly are people doing. If I'm looking at maybe asking Sally Jo to complete a reference, or maybe I see that Sally Jo referred someone, I want to see what kind of activity she's doing. Do I want to, you know, does she do a lot of referrals? Has she done a lot of references? I want to be able to identify that in the Salesforce so that I, so basically your advocates are doing things in your Advocate Hub, but I don't think any of us expect our sales users to go to the Advocate Hub to see what they're doing. And so this is a way of allowing that information to live in Salesforce in some form so that it's easily accessible by your sales team or anyone else, let's say um, maybe some senior level executives, anyone who's looking at metrics. It's a good way for them to see what type of activity is happening. Um, in the Advocate Hub and who in the Salesforce, who in your Salesforce instance is very active. And so this advocacy activity section allows you to do that. Now the last thing for the advocate and contact integration is the ability to nominate someone from Salesforce. So if in Salesforce someone is already an advocate, they will not you will not see this blue box on their profile. Instead you'll see a little basically a snapshot of their Influative VIP profile. So Influative VIP profile is also um, like a custom object that lives on the, the advocate's contact record within Salesforce. So if, they're, if they are an advocate, it'll have their name, it'll have a little, like their little advocate of profile picture, it'll have their badges, it'll show how many points they have. If they're not an advocate, then we also have the option to add this button that says nominate now. And if your salesperson is look at working with someone and they think, wow, like Dave, this person would be a really great advocate or I really want to you know, treat them to a special opportunity, they can click nominate now. And what that's going to do, so this is again on the Salesforce contact record, you click nominate now and then their name is going to be sent over here to the nominees list in your Advocate Hub, which you get to by going to your advocates list, then clicking 
invite nominees, and then you see this whole list here. And so, for example, I'm, at, I'm on the top of the list on this particular example, and it says, you know, Heather Page, Heather Testing at Influida.com, and nominated by Steve Organ, which indicates that the person who was logged into Salesforce and who nominated me specifically was named Steve Organ. Um, again, Steve is our Salesforce person here at Influida. Um, so that's why he and I would have been testing this together. So this lets you see, like, okay, you know, this particular Salesforce Salesforce user nominated this person, um, and you can track this information um, if you have your field set up properly as well. Or sorry, so then as well, like I could choose, okay, you know, Steve nominated Heather. I really want to invite her because I know that Steve already always has really great customers. So then you can click and then you can invite them. Um, you could also do something that I know some of you have done where you set up a contest so that you're encouraging all of your salespeople to invite new users. Uh, and then what you do is when they nominate them, then you can track who has nominated whom and then um, you know, run your contest based on that information. So it's always going to show that the source of that nominee is Salesforce, and then it will show under the name who nominated that person. So referrals and lead tracking. This is probably one of the bigger elements of the integration that I think we all use um, when you have it set up. So let's talk a little bit about what that means. Essentially, in the Advocate Hub, we give the option for your advocates to make a referral, essentially to recommend someone that they think would be a good fit for your company or your product to be a customer. Um, and then that creates a lead in Salesforce, and that lead then progresses through what's referred to as the funnel. Um, so it goes from being a lead to an opportunity, and then either a closed one or closed lost opportunity. So either they become a customer or they don't. So um, there's basically the integration tracks this progression so that after an advocate makes a referral, they can then determine or they can have sort of a closed loop piece of information on whether or not that has become, they have become a customer and they can get points based on that process. So that in, in essence encourages your advocates to submit more high quality leads simply because they want to make sure that the leads they're submitting or the referrals they're submitting are going to earn them more points. So at the point when it becomes a lead to an opportunity or goes from an opportunity to a closed one um, so they become a customer, your advocates are going to get a lot more points. So by having this type of system, it really encourages your advocates to submit high quality leads that they think are actually going to go all the way to the end and really get them a lot of points. So what's this look like? For your advocate, they start they see this page here. They go to the, either the Referrals tab or they open a Referral Challenge card, and they fill in a person that they want to refer. They put in the name, email, um, whatever information you've made mandatory, they'll fill in here. And then from that point in time, the person they've referred lives just, so, just below um, where you refer something on the Referrals tab. There's a section called My Referrals, and that essentially shows your advocates who they've referred and the status of that particular referral and how many points they've earned thus far. So when they first refer someone, they go in at the top of the funnel, that person is a prospect. So then we're ev evaluating the prospect. So these are things that you all have the room to customize. So advocates track the leads the status referred, and they see the points that are accumulated. So let's go into the application and just have a look at kind of what happens on the back end for you as the administrator when someone refers someone. Okay, here we are. So when I'm setting up my referral challenge, I have this stage that's called Refer a Prospect. And on this stage, I can do a couple of different things. So I can determine custom information. I can determine what information is required. Um, but I can also scroll down here to my Salesforce.com lead creation settings, and I can say, you know, what would I like my campaign ID to be, and what would I like my lead source to be. When this, so when this lead goes from here, the Advocate Hub, when an um, when an advocate uses this challenge to submit a lead or to submit a referral, what happens to that lead when it gets to Salesforce? You can choose to associate it to a particular campaign. You can so let's say you were really doing a big referrals drive in your Advocate Hub in April, and you wanted to make sure that those leads were given special attention once they landed in Salesforce. You could make a special campaign in Salesforce, and then put that campaign ID here in the Advocate Hub in, the chat in that particular challenge, and then all leads that come in through this challenge would be associated to that campaign. And then member status is something that you can set up as well, and that also, depending on the rules that you, your Salesforce has for how leads are treated, this can have an influence on what happens next as well. 
And the very important thing here is for you guys for you guys to put in is the lead source. So a lot of you want to know, you know, how do I surface where my leads are or which leads are coming from my Advocate Hub marketing program? Um, so what you can do here is just type in Influitive Referral. And then this, will be this information will become attached on the lead source for each of those leads, and they, they will show up in Salesforce. So you can basically report on it, or you can just um, you know, use this information to dive a little bit deeper into these things. Now the other thing that you can do when you are setting up your Advocate, uh, refer Advocate Hub Referral Challenge is uh, the important thing is these lead evaluation stages. So we just looked at the referral prospect. The other next one is lead evaluation. On the lead evaluation, you're basically telling Salesforce, you're basically saying, describing for the Advocate Hub how Salesforce is going to treat your leads and how your Advocate Hub should respond accordingly. So let's say, so these here under Salesforce lead status are all examples of statuses that could be given to a lead after it is basically touched or looked at in Salesforce. Um, once it comes in and it's inter it interacts with the sales team or whatever, the thing about this is it's a very custom process and it depends on what your team internally does when they're sort of looking at the sales cycle. So when something comes in, it gets a status, and then you can use these filters here to basically tell, your, um, to tell the Advocate Hub what to do with the lead based on its status in Salesforce. So every, I guess on a regular basis, the Advocate Hub is again running over to Salesforce saying, hey, like we have this lead, we send it over to you, um, has the status of it changed? And if the status of it changes to you know, SDR working it, or it's disqualified, or open not contacted, you can say what that means for the app for, for the lead. And if it's, um, it can be no change, so nothing happens, just stay at this stage, we're still evaluating the referral. Um, you can say re rejected, so no, this lead is it's a dud, move on, or accepted. Um, and in that case, it means the lead will move on to the opportunity evaluation stage. Um, and so by determining this, you can set up the Salesforce probability information here, um, and this will determine what happens as well. So again, these, these two funnel stages here are all about determining what events in Salesforce, what the sort of uh, consequence of events in Salesforce is for, advoc for the information that you're passing to an advocate have about whether their lead was qualified or not. Okay, so we're going to go back to our slideshow again. And we're going to look here. So this is a screenshot of what it looks like on a lead tracking report in Salesforce. So when you install the Influitive App Exchange package, which is what facilitates the integration beyond just you putting in your Salesforce password within the Advocate Hub, if you install the full App Exchange package, then it, if that includes a series of reports. Um, so these reports basically allow you to report on specific advocacy activities. Now, uh, one of these things is referred leads. So when you look at referred leads, you can see, okay, if you sort by lead source, then you can see all the influitive referrals. Um, and that will allow you to identify, you know, what's the status of them, how well are my lead sources, how well are leads that come from influitive referral, are they doing better, or do they convert at a higher rate than, say, a lead that comes from, like, uh, a webinar or some other kind of marketing campaign or you know other any kind of other initiative is it you know is it more valuable to get a lead from a conference that costs a lot of money to go to or is it more valuable to get a lead from an the influitive referral source um, so these are all just different things that you can think about and that you can use in order to show and demonstrate the value of your advocate hub to your team internally Okay, so this is just like a little diagram to show kind of what happens here. So you have your lead conversion that's happening, um, and that, they, that passes information to an account, a bit opportunities, and contacts. So basically someone comes into the system, um, and they'll, when a piece of information, like let's say so I, I refer a new person tomorrow, and that person does not already exist in our Salesforce. This person becomes a contact, maybe they become associated as a lead, um, which becomes an opportunity if it's determined that I'm, you know, a potential good customer, and then hopefully in the end I'll become, you know, a closed. That person will become a closed account, a one account, and then of course there's always more opportunities for more leads and upsells to develop and drive further business opportunities. Um, so that's kind of what that's all about. The last thing that we're going to talk about here is references. So there's a simp super simple way to actually 
go about getting references. And that's a really, I think, valuable element of the Advocate Hub is that it allows you to invite your salespeople to request a reference from within an opportunity, at which point um, they have access to your Advocate Hub database of the individuals. And they can basically say, I need a reference for this opportunity who works at this company. It's important that they have these qualities. And by doing so, they give you a set of parameters, and that creates a challenge, unpublished challenge in your Advocate Hub. And then you as the administrator can look at that challenge, tailor it, and then determine exactly who you want to send it off to. So what I'm going to try and do here is play a video for you guys to see. But it doesn't play the way I wanted it to. So you're just give me, bear with me for one quick second. I'm going to find it, and then I'm going to play it for you guys. Sorry, hang on a second. Someone's telling me that you guys can't see my screen properly. Okay. about the request and send it off to your reference manager. When an advocate is alerted of a request for a reference, they can review the details of the request and choose to accept it. What happens next is a guided workflow that takes the advocate through the reference process. As the advocate progresses through the workflow, they can interact with your reference manager and provide feedback which can be shared with you. You can monitor the progress of the reference request in Salesforce. When you take a look at the prospect record, you'll notice there's a section for advocacy activity. Are you ready to make your sales deals go faster? Create a reference request today and unleash the power of your advocate. Okay, so I'm seeing some messages that say that perhaps some of you are having um, 
trouble hearing the whole video, so I'm going to make sure that I send this out to you guys. I'm sorry the, uh, for some technical difficulties. I was having trouble getting my video set up. So anyways, we're going to get some tips from uh, the team for how to manage this better afterwards, and I will uh, get this to work. But now, this sort of brings our presentation to a conclusion. Um, do you guys have any questions? This is now the time where I want to throw it open to you guys and see if there's any specific Salesforce-related questions that you kind of have on your mind that you'd like us to tackle. No questions. Okay. I can't imagine that I was able to answer all your Salesforce questions in 30 minutes. So um, I guess sort of ruminate on this. And if you do have any follow-up questions, please let us know. Uh, we'll be sharing this video and some additional resources after the fact. Um, as I mentioned, our sprint around Salesforce education is going to really help us develop some better Salesforce uh, materials for all of you guys to read as well. So I'll make sure that I direct you to all of that information. Um, otherwise, thank you so much for joining us. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your Wednesday afternoon. Bye-bye.